Previously, at Summer's Landing, we loaded up our Nurture Right 360 with about 45 quail eggs and set them to incubate. On day 15, we candled the eggs and had about an 86% fertility rate, which is higher than we've had in a really long time. Just because we've got 39 eggs doesn't mean we're gonna have 39 chicks. Yeah, don't count your quail before they hatch. Three chicks, so both of these two and this one are malpositioned, meaning they were either sideways or backwards in their shell. So I actually had to help these two. Usually when they start to zipper or hatch out of their shell, they're supposed to peck um, the fat end. See how they, they pecked all the way around the fat end of the shell so they can pop their head out? Oh yay, hello. Welcome to the world. So I'm really curious to see if there's a significant rate of malpositioned chicks that never hatch. We have 19 chicks in the brooder right now, and then the rest of these eggs, a few of them had pipped and were actively trying to hatch, but they were struggling because, again, they were malpositioned. They either pipped on the wrong side of the egg or the middle of the egg. And then there were a lot of eggs that had not pipped at all. So I pulled some of those eggs and tried to help them hatch. There were several that were still alive, so I just gave them a little bit of assistance and stuck them back in the incubator for them to finish out on their own. I just had to show you this. I'm not sure how well you can, you're gonna be able to pick it up on the camera, but this chick is actually deformed. It looks like its skull is still soft and its eyes are not developed. It's kind of sunken in there and it doesn't have any eyes. It's, <laughs> it's been stuck in the shell like this for quite a while. I don't think this chick is gonna survive. I would be really curious to see if it could survive. So I'm just gonna just gonna open that up a little bit. I'm not gonna actually remove the shell because I don't want to pull off the little umbilical cord or if there's any remaining yolk. I'm just gonna open that up so he can escape when he's ready. I think the beak is a little underdeveloped too. I'm amazed that it pipped as well as it did. The eyes, I think maybe he could survive without being able to see, but the beak, I'm not so sure. They definitely need to be able to eat. This is a classic example of a chick that's malpositioned. They're probably sideways in the egg. They pipped out right here. Looks like they, they made a good effort trying to start to hatch since some of the shell flaked off, but they just can't get the mobility that they need if they're sideways or backwards in their shell. So we're just gonna go ahead and crack this one open. I'm pretty sure this one's already dead. Um, I haven't heard anything or seen any movement from this one. So yeah, that's his spine, his back. So a lot of people will say, don't help your chicks hatch because hatching makes them stronger. And that's really not true. When they first crack the shell and start hatching, um, they still don't have their egg yolk absorbed and there's a lot of blood vessels going through the shell. If you start peeling at the shell prematurely, you can rupture those blood vessels and it will cause them to bleed out. Usually from the first time that they pip and break the shell, they still need a good 12 to 24 hours before they finish hatching. It looks like this chick did try to pip. When the pip is crusted over like that and they're not like breathing through it, that's usually a pretty good indicator that the chick died. It looks like it was malpositioned because it pipped right in the middle of the shell instead of over here. I don't think it even finished absorbing its yolk. Yeah, there's a good view. So his head actually was in the point of the egg, which makes it difficult for them to hatch. So they pip to get some air, and then while they're resting, um, they're absorbing the yolk up into their abdomen, and that is what gives them nourishment for their first day or two of life. So it looks like when he pipped, he might have hit a blood vessel or something and it clogged the hole so he wasn't able to breathe. I don't see a beak popping out anywhere. So I'm just going to open a little bit. Okay, so this usually isn't a good sign. If you open up an egg and you can still see a well-defined air pocket, um, that usually means that the chick has not popped into that air pocket to breathe. Yeah, once again, there's a spine coming across the crown of the egg and its head was not in the right place to break into that air pocket. This was actually a little bit of a surprise. There were no pips on this egg, so I was convinced it was dead. Um, but when I popped open the shell, there's still some blood and a little bit of movement. So 
it's likely this chick is not going to survive but i'm still going to put it back in the incubator just to give it a chance to absorb as much of that blood and yolk as possible if we do end up losing that chick or if it bleeds out i try not to beat myself up too much about it it would have died anyways about half if not more of these chicks were malpositioned and or needed assistance hatching the eggs are laying on their side the entire time and then they just get rolled whereas in this incubator the trays hold the eggs vertically pointy side down the nurture right 360 has actually been our best performing incubator we have had really good hatch rates out of this historically obviously it's not ideal to need to intervene because again it's such a delicate process and there's a high rate for failure and messing up any chance is better than zero chance. You know, there's there's a reason people say don't count your chickens before they hatch. Your head is ridiculous.